Majestic Life, How God's Guidance Leads to True Wealth Written and published by God Daily News Introduction Imagine beginning a journey towards true wealth and prosperity, not measured by material possessions, but by spiritual richness. Majestic Life offers this transformative expedition. Rooted in biblical principles like Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, it presents practical steps to align your life with God's will, redefining the concept of prosperity. Now, wouldn't you want to discover how placing trust in God's wisdom can shape a life of abundance and fulfillment? I'm confident you'd be transformed. Before we begin, I'd like to appeal to those who haven't yet subscribed to the channel. Please do this. Please like and share the video. God bless you as you do this. Thanks. Chapter 1 Rethinking Wealth and Success It's time to initiate your paradigm shift, reconsider your definition of wealth and success, and embrace the possibility of a more fulfilling, majestic life. You've been conditioned to view wealth as the accumulation of material goods and success as a high-ranking position. But, have these brought you the satisfaction you yearn for? Often, they leave you wanting more. Consider this, true wealth and success aren't about what you have in your bank account or the accolades you've received. They're about inner richness, peace, contentment, and the ability to give and receive love unconditionally. They're about living a life filled with purpose, passion, and a deep connection to your spiritual essence. You may wonder, how do I achieve this kind of wealth and success? Start by aligning your values with your actions. If you value relationships, invest time in them. If you value peace, create space for it in your daily routine. Let your actions reflect what truly matters to you. Next, pursue your passions. What lights you up and fills your heart with joy? Do more of that. It's not just about making a living, it's about making a life. Finally, connect with your spiritual essence. This connection will guide you towards true fulfillment and a majestic life. Remember, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Rethinking wealth and success starts with you. It's an inside job. Chapter 2 Biblical Principles for Prosperity as you commence on your journey towards redefining wealth and success, let's explore the timeless wisdom of biblical principles for prosperity. According to the Bible, prosperity isn't only about financial wealth but also spiritual richness and contentment. It's a holistic view of prosperity that involves every area of your life. In Proverbs 11 verse 25, it says, A generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Generosity is one of the fundamental principles of prosperity. You're encouraged to share your blessings and serve others selflessly. As you give, you'll receive, creating a cycle of abundance that benefits everyone. Another principle is diligence. Proverbs 10 verse 4, NIV, notes, Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. God honors hard work and perseverance. When you use your God-given talents and abilities effectively, you invite prosperity into your life. Trust in God is also a key principle for prosperity. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, NIV, urges, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. When you trust God and seek His guidance, you'll find wisdom and direction to navigate life's challenges, leading to true prosperity. Chapter 3. The Illusion of Material Wealth While you may be tempted to equate wealth with material possessions, remember that true prosperity goes beyond the tangible and fleeting. The glitz and glamour of material wealth can be seductive. You might convince yourself that owning the latest gadgets, fancy cars, and luxurious homes signifies success. But, let's explore further into the illusion of material wealth. The Bible teaches us that wealth doesn't lie in possessions but in our relationship with God. In Luke 12 verse 15, NIV, Jesus warns, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, 
Life doesn't consist in an abundance of possessions. This profound truth can be hard to grasp, especially when society promotes the opposite. Material wealth is transient and deceptive. It may offer temporary happiness but will leave you feeling empty in the long run. True wealth, on the other hand, is eternal and fulfilling. It's about leading a purposeful life, cultivating good relationships, and growing spiritually. It's about finding joy and contentment in God's love and grace. Chapter 4 God's Guidance in Decision Making Making your way through life's many decisions can seem overwhelming, but don't forget that you're not alone, God's guidance is ever-present and ready to lead you on a path of righteousness and fulfillment. When you feel weighed down by the complexities of life, remember, God's wisdom is infinite and His guidance is a beacon in the darkness. However, recognizing God's guidance isn't about waiting for miraculous signs or hearing voices from the heavens. Rather, it starts with sincere prayer and studying His Word, the Bible. You've got to seek His wisdom before making decisions. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. Remember, God's guidance doesn't always lead to the easiest path, but it invariably leads to the best one. It may involve sacrifice, patience, and stepping outside your comfort zone. But isn't it comforting to know that the Creator of the universe cares for you personally and wants to guide your steps? In your decision-making process, invite God in. Ask for His guidance and be willing to follow His lead, even when it doesn't align with your own desires or understanding. When you do this, you're not just making decisions, you're cultivating a relationship with God. This relationship is the true wealth that surpasses all understanding and leads to a life of peace, purpose, and fulfillment. And isn't that what majestic living is all about? Chapter 5 Seeking True Fulfillment in Life In your quest for true fulfillment, remember that it's not found in material wealth or worldly success, but in a life lived in harmony with God's guidance and purpose for you. This may seem counterintuitive in a world that often equates success with wealth and power. Yet, the Bible, the cornerstone of our faith, points to a different path. The book of Ecclesiastes, for instance, warns about the emptiness of pursuing earthly riches. It's not that these pursuits are inherently evil, but they don't provide the lasting fulfillment you seek. They're fleeting, unable to satisfy the deepest longings of your heart. So, how do you seek true fulfillment? It begins with aligning your life with God's will. This requires a willingness to surrender your desires, plans, and ambitions to Him. It's about seeking His kingdom first, Matthew 6 verse 33, trusting that He knows what's best for you. Prayer is an essential tool in this journey. Through prayer, you can communicate with God, seek His wisdom, and find comfort in His promises. It's also in prayer where you can express your commitment to follow His guidance, no matter where it leads. The journey towards true fulfillment won't always be easy. It can be fraught with challenges, and at times, it may seem like you're swimming against the current. But remember, you're not alone. God is with you, guiding you, and providing you with the grace to persevere. In the end, you'll find that true fulfillment comes from a life lived in sync with God's purpose, a life that reflects His love, compassion, and righteousness. That's the true wealth that God offers, a wealth that's eternal and indestructible. Chapter 6 The Power of Gratitude Practice As you journey towards a life filled with true fulfillment, practicing gratitude can serve as a powerful tool, illuminating God's blessings and enriching your relationship with Him. Gratitude doesn't just acknowledge the good in your life, it also recognizes that this good flows from God. Gratitude opens your heart to God's love and His work in your life. It invites you to slow down and truly see and appreciate His blessings, both big and small. This simple act of thankfulness cultivates a deeper relationship with Him and aligns your heart with His. It's in this alignment that you start experiencing true wealth, a wealth that's not measured by material possessions but by spiritual abundance. But, 
How do you cultivate this practice of gratitude? Start with daily reflection. Set aside a moment each day to reflect on God's goodness. You might find it helpful to keep a gratitude journal. Write down three things you're grateful for each day, no matter how big or small. They could be as simple as a good meal, a kind word, or a beautiful sunset. Practicing gratitude also involves expressing your thankfulness to God through prayer. This isn't about asking for anything, but simply expressing gratitude for everything He's provided. Chapter 7 Living a Life of Purpose While you're cultivating gratitude, it's equally important to discover and live out your God-given purpose, for it's in pursuing this purpose that you'll find true fulfillment and joy. You see, God has bestowed upon each of us unique talents and passions that are meant to guide us towards the path of purposeful living. It's not merely about acquiring wealth, it's about enriching your life and those around you with your God-given gifts. To start, take a moment to reflect on what truly resonates with you. What are your passions? What are you naturally good at? What makes your heart sing? Your answers offer clues to your divine purpose. Once you've identified these, pray. Ask God for guidance in using these talents for His glory. Remember, the Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 3, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He'll establish your plans. Living a life of purpose requires courage and faith. Extending yourself beyond your comfort zone and taking calculated risks while maintaining faith in the divine plan that the Lord has for you is required. But don't worry, you're not alone. God is with you every step of the way, guiding and strengthening you. As Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, I'll counsel you with my loving eye on you. Chapter 8 Overcoming Fear and Doubt Every one of us experiences fear and doubt, but remember, these are merely obstacles on your journey to majestic living, not roadblocks. These feelings often arise when we're about to make a significant change or step into the unknown. But as followers of God, we're provided with a unique tool, faith. The Bible tells us, For God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. This verse reminds us that fear isn't from God. Instead, He gives us power, love, and a sound mind. He equips us to overcome our fears and doubts. Think of David facing Goliath. He was certainly afraid, but his faith in God was stronger than his fear. He confronted his fear, trusted in God's power, and triumphed. You too can use your faith to overcome your fears. Similarly, doubt can be a hindrance to living majestically. But remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, Proverbs 3 verse 5. Doubt often comes from relying on our own understanding, instead of trusting God's wisdom. Confront your doubts, just like you do with your fears. Pray for wisdom, seek God's guidance, and let your faith be bigger than your doubts. Remember, God never leaves us to face our fears and doubts alone. He's always there, guiding and supporting us on our journey to a life of true wealth and majestic living. Chapter 9 Trusting in God's Sovereignty Now that you've learned to confront your fears and doubts with faith, it's time to fully embrace the concept of God's sovereignty, trusting that His plans for your life are far greater than any you could envision for yourself. God's sovereignty means He's in control of everything and His plans are perfect. It's not always easy to trust in this truth, especially when life storms rage around you. But remember, God's hand is steering your life's ship, even when you can't see the shore. In Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, the Bible instructs us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. This passage encourages you to submit to God's authority, acknowledging His wisdom and power over your life. By doing so, you're not simply giving up control, you're gaining the peace of knowing that the God who created the universe is directing your path. God's sovereignty isn't a concept to fear, but rather, one to celebrate. Embrace the freedom that comes from knowing that your life is in His capable hands. 
You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to control every aspect of your life. You simply need to trust in God's sovereignty, His perfect love, and His divine purposes for your life. Chapter 10 The Danger of Covetousness Amid the vast spectrum of human emotions, covetousness often lurks in the shadows, a perilous pitfall that can lead you astray from a life of majesty and peace. This insatiable desire for more, whether it's wealth, power, or recognition, can distort your perspective and priorities. It's a spiritual snare that traps you in a cycle of perpetual dissatisfaction and discontent. The Bible warns us about this danger. In Luke 12 verse 15, Jesus cautioned, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, life doesn't consist in an abundance of possessions. This is a clear reminder that a life centered on material accumulation isn't only empty but also contrary to God's design for abundant living. Covetousness isn't just about wanting more, it's about wanting what someone else has. This desire can consume you, cloud your judgment, and lead to detrimental decisions. Proverbs 15 verse 27 cautions, Whoever is greedy for unjust gain troubles his own household, but he who hates bribes will live. In essence, covetousness creates a spiritual barrier between you and God. When you allow your desires to eclipse your devotion to God, you miss out on the true wealth that comes from a relationship with Him. Chapter 11 Cultivating a Heart of Contentment Shifting your focus from what you lack to what you possess can pave the way towards cultivating a heart of contentment, an essential step in your journey towards majestic living. It's all about appreciating the blessings you have, rather than longing for what you don't have. The Bible instructs us to be content in any circumstance. In Philippians 4 verses 11 to 12, the Apostle Paul says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it's to be in need, and I know what it's to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. This isn't a call to complacency, but an invitation to find peace in God's providence. Cultivating contentment involves a daily commitment to recognizing and cherishing God's gifts in your life. It's about understanding that true wealth and abundance aren't measured by material possessions, but by the richness of your relationship with God. Contentment also means trusting in God's timing. You mightn't have everything you want right now, but remember what's written in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, there is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. Have faith that God will provide in His perfect timing. Cultivate a heart of contentment, and you'll find that the wealth you seek is already within your grasp. When a person lives their life in accordance with the will of God, they experience an abundance of peace, joy, and contentment. Chapter 12 The Importance of Generosity In your journey towards majestic living, cultivating a spirit of generosity is just as crucial as fostering contentment. Developing a generous heart isn't about the size of your wallet, but rather, it's about the size of your heart. It's about choosing to live open-handedly, sharing what you've been given with others. It's a lifestyle, a mindset, a reflection of God's own generous nature. Consider the words in Proverbs 11 verse 25, A generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Do you see the promise here? There's a divine reciprocity at work. You're not just giving away, you're creating room for blessings to flow back into your life. But don't misunderstand, this isn't a prosperity gospel that says, give to get. Instead, it's an understanding that everything you have is God's, and you're simply a steward. Generosity, then, becomes a way of living that acknowledges God's ownership and displays your trust in His provision. So, how does one cultivate this virtue? Start small. Give your time, your attention, your talents. Reach out to those in need. Let your generosity be motivated by love and gratitude, not obligation or desire for reward. As you do, you'll find that the act of giving not only blesses others but enriches your own life as well. In the end, generosity isn't just about money, it's about a way of living that reflects God's heart. 
It's an integral part of majestic living, leading to a wealth that can't be measured in dollars and cents. Chapter 13. Breaking Free from Debt. While cultivating a generous spirit is a key step towards majestic living, it's also important to address the practical matters of life, like managing your finances to break free from debt. You see, debt is more than just a financial issue, it's a weight that can hinder your spiritual and emotional growth. It's a chain that needs to be broken for you to experience God's full blessings. The Bible speaks to this in Proverbs 22 verse 7, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. So, how can you break free? You must first acknowledge your debt, then make a plan to eliminate it. First, make a list of all of your debts, including the interest rates and the monthly payments for each one. It's challenging, but necessary. Then, formulate a budget that prioritizes debt repayment. This might mean cutting back on some comforts, but remember, it's temporary. Every time you make a payment, you're one step closer to freedom. Next, seek God's guidance. Pray for wisdom to navigate this journey, strength to stick to your plan, and faith to believe in His promises. Trust in God's provision and remember Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Breaking free from debt isn't just about financial independence, it's about living a life of true wealth, a life free from the bondage of owing, a life of generosity, and a life guided by God's grace. Take that first step today. God is with you every step of the way. Chapter 14 Finding Joy in Simplicity You may find that a majestic life is often marked not by complexity, but by the profound joy found in simplicity. It's not about having the most, but appreciating what you have. God's guidance teaches us to find contentment in the simple things, using them as stepping stones to true wealth. Take a moment to reflect on the simple blessings in your life. The beauty of a sunrise, the laughter of a child, the comfort of a warm meal. These aren't grandiose, but they're significant. They're moments of grace, signs of God's love. They're simple, yet they fill your life with a richness that material wealth can't provide. The Bible puts it this way in Proverbs 15 verse 16, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. Simplicity doesn't mean deprivation. It's about understanding what truly matters, prioritizing those things, and finding joy in them. Living a simple life doesn't mean you're settling for less. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You're choosing to focus on what's genuinely important, reducing the noise and clutter that can distract from God's guidance. You're choosing a life of purpose, gratitude, and joy, a life that reflects the majesty of God's love. Finding joy in simplicity is a journey, an ongoing process of learning to see God's grace in every facet of your life. It's a crucial step towards a life of true wealth, a majestic life guided by God's wisdom. Chapter 15. Navigating Life's Uncertainties Life's uncertainties may seem challenging, but they're not insurmountable when you're guided by unwavering faith and trust in God's plan. It's normal to feel uneasy when facing the unknown. However, it's important to remember that God's wisdom is far greater than ours. He sees the bigger picture, and His plan for you is perfect, even when it doesn't seem so. Uncertainty can often lead to fear and doubt. But, remember Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 which encourages, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. It's a potent reminder that surrendering to God's will, even amid uncertainty, can lead to a life of true prosperity. When dealing with life's uncertainties, it's vital to pray and seek God's guidance. As Psalm 32 verse 8 promises, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, I'll counsel you with my loving eye on you. God's guidance is a sure way to navigate through any uncertainty that life throws your way. Chapter 16. The Role of Faith in Prosperity Having successfully navigated the unpredictability of life, 
Let us now investigate the vital role that your religion plays in contributing to the achievement of genuine prosperity. Faith, essentially, is trust, assurance, and confidence in God. It's that steadfast belief that He has your best interests at heart, even when circumstances suggest otherwise. Think of your faith as a seed. Your faith, regardless of how small it may be, has the potential to propel you to great heights, just as a single seed can develop into a towering tree. The Bible makes this clear in Matthew 17 verse 20, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. When you wholeheartedly believe that God wants you to prosper and succeed, you're setting the stage for remarkable growth. Now, prosperity isn't solely about financial wealth. It also encompasses peace, joy, and fulfillment. True prosperity is about having an abundance of all the good things that God has promised to those who love Him. It's living a life of purpose, joy, and contentment, regardless of your economic status. Your faith in God's promises fuels this kind of prosperity. It's your faith that propels you to take the necessary steps toward your goals, guided by God's wisdom. Your faith allows you to hold on, even when the going gets tough because you trust in God's plan for your life. Chapter 17 God's Provision in Times of Need In the midst of your darkest trials, rest assured that God's provision is never lacking, always meeting your needs in unexpected ways. His unwavering love and mercy are consistent, even when your circumstances are not. God's provision extends far beyond the physical and material. He offers peace during turmoil, comfort in sorrow, and strength in weakness. In the biblical book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul writes, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4 verse 19. This promise isn't limited to your financial or material needs. It encompasses every aspect of your life, including emotional, spiritual, and relational needs. When you feel you're at your lowest, remember the story of Elijah in 1 Kings 17. God provided for his needs in a miraculous way, commanding the ravens to feed him during a period of severe drought. This wasn't just about physical sustenance, but also a declaration of God's faithfulness and provision in times of need. Take heart and have faith. God's abundance isn't confined by human understanding or limitations. His provision is a confirmation of His unending love and faithfulness. It's not always about having your wants fulfilled, but about having your needs met in God's perfect timing and in His perfect way. As you navigate through life's challenges, be assured that God's provision is a constant. Trust in His timing, lean on His understanding, and rest in His love. He's your provider in all circumstances, in times of abundance and in times of need. Chapter 18 Building a Life of Stewardship While God's provision is a constant, it's also important for you to cultivate a lifestyle of stewardship, managing His blessings with gratitude and wisdom. This isn't about hoarding or amassing wealth for self-serving purposes. No, it's about understanding that everything you've been given is a trust from God, meant to be used for His glory and the benefit of others. Recognizing that all you have comes from God's hand places you in the role of a steward. As a steward, you're entrusted with managing, developing, and distributing resources. So, how do you build a life of stewardship with this in mind? It starts with a heart of gratitude. When you're truly thankful for what you have, it's easier to view your assets as God's provision rather than your own acquisition. Next, seek wisdom in managing those resources. This wisdom comes from God and His Word. The Bible is filled with guidance on how to handle wealth responsibly. Proverbs 3 verse 9, for instance, advises, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the firstfruits of all your crops. This implies giving back to God, which is a foundational principle of stewardship. Lastly, aim to benefit others with your resources. Remember the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. The servants who used their talents wisely were praised. In the same way, you're called to be a faithful steward, using your resources wisely for God's glory and the benefit of others. 
In this way, you'll cultivate a life of stewardship, reflecting God's love and generosity to the world. Chapter 19 The Value of Hard Work Ethic Every ounce of effort you pour into your work carries immense value, not just in the prosperity it brings, but also in the character it builds within you. It's not always about the financial gain, but the personal growth that comes from diligence and dedication. Your work ethic, that steadfast commitment to your responsibilities, is a confirmation of your character. In Proverbs 14 verse 23, it's written, In all toil there's profit, but mere talk tends only to poverty. God appreciates when you put your heart and soul into your efforts. Hard work doesn't go unnoticed. God sees your perseverance, your diligence, and your commitment to doing your best. Each day, as you endeavor to work hard and do well, you're demonstrating your faith in His promises. Colossians 3 verse 23 reminds us, Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men. When you approach your tasks with this mindset, your work ethic becomes a form of worship, your daily duties a validation of your faith. But remember, it's not just about laboring tirelessly. It's about working smart, with purpose and integrity. It's about using the talents God has granted you to their fullest potential. This is the value of a strong work ethic. It's a demonstration of faith, a validation of character, and a pathway to true wealth. With God's guidance and your commitment to hard work, you'll find not just material prosperity, but the contentment and fulfillment that come from living a life of purpose. Chapter 20 Putting God's Kingdom First Building on the value of hard work, it's equally important to prioritize God's kingdom in your life, this is the next step towards majestic living. As Jesus instructed in Matthew 6 verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This means that your primary concern shouldn't be your personal wants and desires, but rather God's will and his divine plan. Imagine your life as a ship on an ocean journey. You can be the hardest working sailor, but without a compass, you may end up lost at sea. God's kingdom is that compass. It provides direction and purpose, guiding you towards true wealth that isn't just material, but spiritual as well. However, putting God's kingdom first doesn't imply neglecting your responsibilities or goals. Rather, it's about aligning them with God's purpose. It's about asking yourself, are my actions reflecting God's love? Am I using my talents to serve others, as God has served me? In this way, you're not only enriching your life but also contributing to God's kingdom. Chapter 21 The Dangers of Idolatry Exploring the path to majestic living, you must remain vigilant against the subtle snares of idolatry, a pitfall that can easily divert you from God's divine plan. This isn't solely about worshipping graven images or false gods. It's more insidious than that. Idolatry can take many forms, often dressed up as seemingly harmless pursuits or affections that, unchecked, can lead you astray. You see, anything that takes the preeminent place in your life, replacing God, can be considered an idol. It could be money, fame, power, or even relationships. The danger lies in the fact that these things, while not inherently evil, can become your primary focus, causing you to lose sight of God's guidance. Take heed of the biblical warning in Exodus 20 verse 3, You shall have no other gods before me. This command is explicit, but its implications are profound and far-reaching. It's alarming how easily you can fall into the trap of idolatry without even realizing it. But don't lose heart. You're not alone in this struggle. The Bible is full of stories of people who wrestled with the same issues. And guess what? God provided a way out for them, and He'll do the same for you. As you continue on this journey towards majestic living, keep your eyes firmly on God, ensuring He remains your primary focus. Consider the words of Matthew 6 verse 33, Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the key to avoiding the dangers of idolatry and living a life of true wealth and fulfillment. Chapter 22 
Living a life of integrity. In your pursuit of majestic living, maintaining a life of integrity isn't just a noble goal, it's a divine mandate. This isn't about keeping up appearances or pleasing others. No, it's about aligning your actions with your core beliefs and values. Integrity, according to Proverbs 28 verse 6, is so crucial that, better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who's crooked in his ways. This scripture underscores that it's far better to be poor yet honest, than to be rich and dishonest. So, how do you live a life of integrity? To begin with, it's about being honest in all you do. This means being truthful, even when it's uncomfortable or inconvenient. Next, it's about being reliable, when you make a commitment, you honor it. Thirdly, it's about being responsible, admitting when you're wrong, and making amends when necessary. Remember, integrity isn't a one-time event, it's a lifelong journey. It's about making the right choices, not the easy ones. It's about standing firm in your beliefs, even when it's hard. Living a life of integrity, you'll find, is the bedrock of majestic living. It's a path that leads to true wealth, not just materially but spiritually and emotionally. As you walk this path, Guided by God's word, you'll experience his peace, joy, and fulfillment. And this, ultimately, is what majestic living is all about. Chapter 23 The Power of Prayer and Meditation As you journey toward majestic living, don't underestimate the profound power of prayer and meditation in your daily life. These spiritual disciplines can be your lifeline, connecting you to God's wisdom and guidance. They're not just old-fashioned practices, but essential tools for maneuvering life's challenges with grace and resilience. Prayer, fundamentally, is a conversation with God. It's your chance to express gratitude, seek help, and surrender your worries. You're talking to the Creator of the universe, who knows your heart, understands your struggles, and wants the best for you. In Jeremiah 29 verse 12, God promises, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I'll listen to you. Meditation, on the other hand, is about quieting your mind to hear God's voice. It's a time to focus on a Bible verse or a spiritual truth, allowing God's word to penetrate your heart and transform your thinking. Psalm 1 verse 2 illustrates this beautifully, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Prayer and meditation together form a powerful duo. As you pray, you're reaching out to God, and as you meditate, you're opening yourself up to hear from Him. This cycle of speaking and listening deepens your relationship with God, empowers you to live righteously, and reveals the path to true wealth and majestic living. Hence, make time for these disciplines, and watch your life flourish under God's guidance. Chapter 24 Embracing a life of humility. Embracing a life of humility starts with understanding your heart's posture. It's about acknowledging that we're not perfect and that's okay. In the journey of majestic living, humility keeps us grounded, reminding us of our human limitations while motivating us to aim for excellence. It could be contended that the secret to majestic living lies not in wealth or status, but in adopting a posture of the heart that's grounded in humility. This humility, dear reader, isn't mere self-deprecation, but a profound understanding of your place in the grand tapestry of life. It's acknowledging that you're part of something far larger, more complex, and more beautiful than your individual desires or ambitions. When your heart is positioned towards humility, you're more receptive to God's guidance. You're not clouded by self-interest or pride, but open to the wisdom that can lead to true wealth, the kind that isn't quantifiable in dollars or possessions, but in love, peace, and fulfillment. Despite the grandeur of your dreams and ambitions, you must acknowledge your limitations, for within this recognition lies a life of humility and true majesty. This isn't a call to abandon ambition, but rather an invitation to surrender your pride, embrace humility, and lean heavily on God's guidance. You see, you're not created to be self-sufficient, you're designed to be God-dependent. Recognizing your limitations isn't a sign of weakness but of wisdom. It's acknowledging that you're human, finite, and fallible. 
This realization propels you to seek God's unlimited wisdom and strength. It's about understanding that without Him, you can do nothing of lasting significance, John 15 verse 5. Resist the urge to be self-reliant. Instead, embrace your reliance on God. This is where true wealth and majestic living begin. It's not about material riches but about spiritual prosperity, characterized by peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, Romans 14 verse 17. Chapter 25 Walking in God's Wisdom As you journey through majestic living, it's essential to walk in God's wisdom. It involves seeking divine direction and fully trusting His counsel. Remember, His wisdom is your guiding light. Illuminating the path to a life of fulfillment and joy. You're on a quest for enlightenment, but remember, seeking divine direction means more than just asking for guidance, it requires a deep commitment to walking in God's wisdom each and every day. It's not a vital pursuit, but an active endeavor that demands your heart and soul. Listening for God's voice is vital in this journey. You'll find it in the quiet moments of prayer and reflection, and in the words of the Scripture. Keep in mind that the Bible is a comprehensive repository of heavenly wisdom. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. Seeking divine direction is about humility, acknowledging that God's wisdom surpasses your own. It's about surrendering yourself, your plans, and your desires to His supreme authority. It's about seeking His will above all else, and trusting that He knows what's best for you. This, dear reader, is the first step towards majestic living, a life filled with true wealth and divine blessings. Having started on this voyage of seeking divine direction, it's now time to embrace the wisdom God imparts, trusting His counsel every step of the way. Remember, God's counsel isn't just a suggestion, it's a divine command meant to steer you towards the path of righteousness and prosperity. In Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. This passage reassures you that God's wisdom is far superior to human understanding. Trust in His guidance, even when it seems counterintuitive or challenging. God's counsel is a treasure trove of divine wisdom. It's like a compass, always guiding you in the right direction, leading you away from harm and towards blessings. It's not always easy to trust, especially when things don't go as planned. However, your faith will be rewarded with true wealth, the wealth of peace, joy, and fulfillment. So, isn't it time to redefine wealth in your life? It's not just about material gain, it's about spiritual richness and alignment with God's will. Embrace humility, live with integrity, and lean on prayer. Remember, true wealth comes from walking in God's wisdom. Let His guidance lead you on a journey to peace, fulfillment, and majestic living. The road to true wealth is within your grasp, are you ready to take the first step? Thanks for listening.